Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I'm very excited to bring to you the Bonnie Bay Bonbons Blanket. This is a blanket made up of 42 different squares. They're crocheted using a very special DK weight cotton from South Africa called Eco Cotton. Um, they also have yarn that's very similar to this that's also an excellent substitute called Eco Fusion, which is a blend of the cotton and the bamboo. Very responsibly sourced and produced in South Africa, as I mentioned, um, by the Nutrient Fibers Yarn Company and distributed here in the U.S. by Good Loops Yarn. So you can find that link in the video description below. Now, if you're not able to attain that yarn or if you want to use a different type of yarn, you're free to do that, as always, with any of my designs. Um, and this can actually be a very good stash buster, but I will say that to get the kind of drape that I'm showing you here and the lacy antique effect, it's really good to stick with something of a cotton weight and oh, of a DK cotton weight. Um, but you can substitute your acrylics. But if you do that, please make sure that you upsize your hook from what I'm about to show you in just a minute. For those of you who are first time to my channel, I want to say welcome. And if you could please hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up would be fantastic. And if you could hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the notifications coming your way from the Bonnie Bay Crochet um, channel. All right, well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using a bag of Eco Cotton. This is by Nurturing Fibers. This is a DK weight, 100% cotton fiber. And I'm going to be using 42 different colors. The, bond, the bag of Bond Bonds comes with many, many um, different colors. I believe there are more than 42 in the bag. And um, so just one of those um, that is available in the link below. You will need that. Now, if you're not going to use these bonbons for the different colors, you're going to need approximately 27 yards for each of the squares that are crocheted. So if you wanted to use an alternate yarn, that's fine. I would recommend that you stick with a cotton or a the cotton fusion is another option that is available from the same yarn company. It's um, a yarn that is 50% Eco cotton and then 50% bamboo, and it has an excellent feel to it. It's called fusion. Now, for constructing the squares together, um, putting them all together, you're going to need five balls of the the 50 gram balls of the DK cotton. I of course used the vanilla color. Let me go ahead and give you the stats on this. Um, each ball. Let's see, where is it? Okay, here we go. Each ball is 125 meters. So whatever, five times that, that would be five, uh, 625 meters of the yarn to work the edging and to, you know, put the lace around all the squares and construct them. So if you want to use a different color, that's fine. I just like sticking to the neutral. And um, for crochet hooks, I have a few things to say about this. Um, for the crochet, crocheting these together, I used primarily the G or the 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook to make the squares and to crochet them together. I used the size F or 5 or 3.75 millimeter crochet hooks. Now, one thing I wanted to say about this is you need to be careful because not all for example, all G hooks are the same. You really do have to pay attention to the um, millimeter size of the hooks because some of them are marketed as 4.5 um, millimeter or 4.25 millimeter. So you need to be really careful on this. Um, and the other thing, because the quantity of the yarn in these bond bonds is limited, it's it's extremely limited, gauge matters in this particular project. And if you're finding that you're running out of yarn with the bond bonds before you complete the square, then you're going to have to go to a smaller crochet hook than what I am using. And that's not unusual. Um, the crochet hooks are not nearly as important um, as meeting gauge. So whenever you see a crochet hook posted for a particular project, 
it's really an option. It's like that's what the designer used to get gauge. But if you need to change the size crochet hook, by all means do that. And I believe many of you, if you tend to crochet very loosely, you're going to have to go to a much smaller hook. Now, those of you who are very tight crocheters, you might actually have to bump up to a size H. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to put a little note in there about this because since the, the number of yards in each of these bonbons is limited, if you are off gauge even a little bit, this is going to affect your project. Okay, so what else are we going to need? As always, I'm going to recommend that you have a yarn needle for hiding loose ends, of which there are going to be many. And you're going to need a nice sharp pair of scissors. I recommend, you know, a very sharp pair just so that um, you don't gnaw at the yarn. And as like I said, you're going to have many, many strands to hide. So make sure that you have a very good pair of scissors and a yarn needle or two. For the record, if you're going to be using the, the um, balls of the Eco Cotton, each ball will make approximately five squares, five of your completed squares. Now that's without the edging here, without the eyelet edging. Which is so if you decide to use the Eco balls of yarn, you will need a total of nine for the various colored part of the square. And then you'll need five additional for the finishing and the construction. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 23 stitches. And as you can see, I am using my size G or 4.00 crochet hook. So go ahead and work those 23 chains. Now starting in the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four, we are going to work what I love to use often is called a waddle stitch and that would be a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. This is just one of my favorite um, stitches to use now to create crochet fabric. Okay, now we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and we're going to work another waddle stitch, which is a single crochet, and notice I just worked in one side loop of that chain, chain one, and double crochet. And now we're going to skip two, one, two, and in the next stitch we're going to work a double crochet. And then a double crochet in the next two stitches as well. Until we have three double crochets in a row. Just like that. Now we're going to work a half double crochet in the next stitch. And this is going to be the center of our little bonbon cable. And then three more double crochets, one in each of the next three stitches. That's one, two, three. Now we're going to work two more waddle stitches starting in that next stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet, skip two stitches, one, two, and in the next we work a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet, skip the next two stitches, one, two, and then single crochet in that last chain. Okay, took me a minute there to get that, there we go. And so this is what we should have at the end of row one of our square. Now we're going to turn for row two, chain two, and we're going to skip the first single crochet and this double crochet. And this is what you're going to do um, after you've turned really for every row. We're going to work only in these chain one spaces of the waddle stitches. And we're going to work a waddle stitch in there, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. I'm going to skip the single crochet and the double crochet again of that waddle stitch and work only in that chain one space. I'm going to work 
single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Skip the single crochet and working over these double crochets, we're going to run work front post double crochets over the next three stitches. Half double in that half double crochet. And then front post double crochets over the next three double crochets. And if you need to learn any of these stitches or need more time on these particular stitches, please look in the video description below. I will have some links there if you need to know how to do the front post double crochets and you need a little more time on that than what I'm giving right now. Okay, now for the two waddle stitches, we're just working in those waddle stitches. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then the next waddle stitch. Make another waddle stitch, single crochet, chain one, and double crochet. When you get to the end of the row, we're going to work in that turning chain, just right in the entire chain, not into a loop, and work a single crochet. And this is what you should have at the end of two rows. Let me go ahead and give you my little tutorial right now too. If I am going too fast for you on these stitches, first of all, I apologize. Um, and let me give you a solution. At the bottom of the screen right here for right-handers, it's on the other side for left-handers, there's a little gear icon. If you click on that, it will bring up a menu and one of the items on that menu is playback speed. And you can actually pick a slower playback speed if that serves you. Or if you're getting a little bored and want to speed me up, you can choose that one as well. Um, on the cell phone, it'll be up here in the upper right hand, there'll be three vertical dots. It'll be on this side for the left hand version. And that too will bring up the playback speed and then you can select a slower playback speed. I hope that serves you well. All right, so now we're gonna begin row three, chain two, and just like the way we began the last two rows, working only in that chain one space, we're going to work waddle stitches in those first two chain one spaces. Again, this will be the way each each row begins. Now we are going to work back post double crochets over the next three post stitches from the last row. So we're going to work one back post double crochet, two, it's one over each back post stitch. And now we get to the half double crochet, which is the center of the cable, which is work a half double crochet working through the top loops. The next three stitches are going to be back post stitches again. So we work back post double crochets over the next three stitches. Okay, now we have two waddle stitches and you know what to do. We work waddle stitches, single crochet, chain one, double crochet, and each of those two stitches. And then we get to the chain two, turning chain, work a single crochet in that space, just like, just like that. And this is what you should have after three rows. Now we begin row number four, chain two, and this is the row where we actually cross the cable. So it's going to be a little different once we get to the center part. But for now, the first two things we do are those two waddle stitches just like we've been doing. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet, which is our waddle stitch in each of those chain one spaces. Okay, now this is where working the cable is a little bit different from what you may have done if you've worked other people's cables in the past. Okay, this is kind of a unique um, crossing system that I've kind of designed and I really like the way it smooths out the cable, which is why it's going to be a little different here. So we're going to skip the three post stitches, one, two, three, and we're going to start by working a half double crochet in the top 
of that half double crochet. Now we're going to work, notice that I wrapped the hook twice, we're going to work front post treble crochets in each of these next three stitches. So that's the taller stitch where you wrap the hook twice and then complete it as you would a normal treble crochet. So we have three of those. Now working in front of the last four stitches, that would be the half double crochet in those three front post treble crochets. We're going to front post treble in this stitch, this stitch, and then this stitch in that order. And it's going to be a little bit of a stretch. It feels like it's pulled quite a bit, but this will all, this will all work out, I promise. One. Two. I know it's hard to see once I put my thumb over that, but the reason I do that is to help steady the stitch. And this is the third stitch right there. Okay, so we have crossed that cable. After we do that, we go immediately to those two waddle stitches again worked in each of those chain one spaces. And then a single crochet in that chain two turning chain. And this is what you have after four stitches. Don't worry if this isn't all straight and everything. This will be worked out as we do the perimeter rounds and everything. Still have a long way to go for this little square. Okay, now we're going to work row five, chain two, and again, working in those waddle stitches. I'm gonna work them a little bit faster because you know what that is. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And this is the part that, that you're gonna need to focus on. We're gonna work three back post double crochets, one, two, three. Now these are back post double crochets. The only time we use treble crochets, front post treble, is when we cross that cable. Okay, so after we've worked those three back post double crochets, we're actually gonna work a half double in between. This is where the three uh, and the three where they cross, this is the center of the cable, and just, just, just put it right in between that last stitch and that next stitch to come. And that's just going to keep that center of the cable defined for us. And now we work three back post double crochets. So it's one, two, and three. And notice that we're going to skip this half double crochet there. And just to, for, for you mathematicians out there, um, you may be concerned that the stitch count has changed because we've, we've missed that half double. Well, actually the stitch count remains the same throughout because even though we're skipping this half double, we've added this one in. So in essence, these cancel out, therefore maintaining a constant stitch count, which again is the seven stitches in the middle and two waddle stitches and two waddle stitches on each side. So now we're just ready after those three back post double crochets, work the two waddle stitches, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then in the last in the chain two space, we work a single crochet. And this is what we have after five rows. Now we're ready to begin row six, chain two, and again, the waddle stitches. That's one, and then this is two. After we do that, we're going to do front post double crochets. So work three of those front post double crochets over those cable post stitches. So that's one, two, three, half double in that half double, and then three more front post double crochets. And we get to those waddle stitches, work a waddle stitch in that chain one space. 
maybe not the easiest thing to see, but you can certainly feel those little openings there. And then we get to the end of the row. We work a single crochet. And this is what you have after six rows. Okay, for row seven, I'm going to turn, chain two, waddle stitches in those chain one of the waddle stitches of the previous row. And after you do several of these, I promise the muscle memory should kick in rather easily and you won't even have to think about those. Now we're going to work back post double crochets over the next three stitches. Half double in that half double, working through the top two loops, and then three more back post double crochets. One, two, three, and then waddle stitches in those next two waddle stitches. and single crochet in the turning chain. So you see much of this is similar. Now we're ready to begin row number eight. And this is going to be the same as what we did here down a few rows. So that's one, two, three. Okay, that's on row four. So we cross the cables on row four. We're going to do that again on row eight. And we're just going to chain two, work the waddle stitches, one, in each of those chain one spaces. And now we're going to skip the three post stitches and work a half double in that half double crochet working in through the top loops. Wrap our hook twice. We're going to work front post treble crochets in the next three stitches. Remember, this is the only time we work front post or back. We don't use back post trebles, but only time we use front post treble crochets is when we're crossing this cable. Now working in front of the last four stitches, that'd be the three front post trebles and that half double crochet. We're going to half double crochet in this stitch, front post treble, and this, this, and then this stitch in that order. So these are all front post treble crochets. I know I'm being redundant, but I just really, really want to be clear. So there's no wondering about what these stitches are. Okay, after doing that, we go right back to those treble, I'm sorry, the waddle stitches. We were single crochet, chain one, double crochet, which is that waddle stitch in that chain one space of each of those from the previous row. And then a single crochet in the chain two space. And this is what you should have after eight rows. Now it's time to do row number nine, chain two. And again, those waddle stitches, I'm going to just kind of speed up just a little bit because I know you know that I know that you know <laughs> how to do these at this point. Um, and if not, I do have videos for this you can check out um, on just the waddle stitch. Now we're going to work three back post double crochets. One, two, three, and then in between the last stitch and the next stitch, you'll see a space here where my finger is poking through. We're going to work a half double crochet there. That should be the middle or the center of that cable. And then three more back post double crochets. One, two, and three. And then we're now going to work those two waddle stitches each in those chain one spaces. Ending the row with a single crochet in that chain two space. We're going to turn and this is what you should have after 
nine rows. Okay, now it's, we're ready for row 10. We only have two rows to go before we do our perimeter rounds. Waddle stitches, those first two stitches in the chain space, chain one space that is. And front post double crochets in the next three stitches. One, two, three, half double in that half double crochet. And then three more front post double crochets. And working in the chain one space, we do two more waddle stitches. And single crochet in that chain two space at the end. And this is what you should have after 10 rows. So this is our last row working across now, chain two. And we are going to work waddle stitches again in those chain one spaces. Back post, double crochets in the next three post stitches. One, two, three. Half double worked in the top loops of those half double crochets three more back post double crochets. One, two, there we go, three, and then waddle stitches in those last two chain one spaces of the last rows, waddle stitches. single crochet in that chain two space. This is from the back side. Let's see what it looks like from the front side. And this is kind of a fun little cable because if you just use your imagination, it does look a little bit like a piece of candy with the wrapper ends kind of twisted on it, which is another reason I like to call this Bonnie Bay's Bonbon Blanket. Now we're going to chain one and turn, and we are going to work a single crochet perimeter round all the way around the square. And I'm very specific about how I am doing this. And let me show you how I do this. Working in that chain one space only, we're gonna work two single crochets. And then working in the single crochet, again, going through the top loops, one single crochet there. So we have three single crochets worked in that first waddle stitch. And we do that again. We're skipping this double crochet and we're working two single crochets in that chain one space. And then we work one in that single crochet there. Now working across the cable portion, we are gonna work one single crochet in each of the first three stitches now this is kind of important here. We're gonna skip this half double crochet and we're going to work a single crochet in the next three post stitches. We're skipping this double crochet. We're gonna work two single crochets in that chain one space, one in that next single crochet, skip the double crochet, two, single crochets in that chain one space, and then one in that single crochet. Now let me show you something. We are not going to work in that chain two turning space. Do not work in there. So as you count all the way across, we ha should have a total of 18 single crochets along the top. Now the goal for this perimeter round is we are going to work 18 18, 18. It's very important that we have 18 single crochets around each side. Now we're going to turn 90 degrees 
chain two and we're going to work another single crochet worked in the same place as the last single crochet so you form a little corner after that chain two and the single crochet to form that corner and this first single crochet does count as our first stitch along this side okay we're going to work two single crochets in the next row end one in the next two in the next row end and then one in the next so so far we should have one two three four five six seven stitches two in the next place one in the next row end two in the next one in the next row end two and then one in the next row end and let's do another count just to see where we are on the, the stitch count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so we come all the way to the end I have counted from this stitch onward we have sixteen and in this space here which is the chain two space we're going to work two more stitches one two and that makes 18 along that side now we're going to turn 90 degrees chain two and instead of working in the same space as here we're going to actually make our first single crochet in this place where that first one of those waddle stitches was worked in that chain foundation so go ahead and work one single crochet there over this chain two space work two single crochets in the next space where the waddle stitch was worked one single crochet and that chain two space two single crochets now along the opposite of the cable we work one in each were those three post stitches or actually they were double crochets but they later the other rows became post stitches we're going to skip the half double crochet just like we did along the other edge and then single crochet in each of the next three stitches and then again with the waddle stitch one in where the waddle stitch was connected in two where those two chains are and then one in the next hole and then where the two chains are let's go ahead and work two single crochets now we're going to chain two and now we're ready to work along the row ends and you see this little um, thread getting in the way what you can do you can actually crochet over this I'm going to try to show you how I, I do this I'm going to go ahead and move this first single crochet to the corner here and try to hide that knot in that little space there so what's one and then let's work two single crochets in the next row end and then one single crochet in the next row end and then two one two and then one and then two one two and then one and I think that's enough on this strand so I'm going to go ahead and actually give it an early trim be one less strand to worry about don't worry there'll be many others so we worked one stitch there let's work two the next row end one in the next two in the next and let's just get a quick little count here just to see how we're doing one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
and then that would be 16 and let's see, the first stitch was up here, so we have two more to go. Let's put 17 and 18 right there. Chain two, and then we're gonna now join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. And we are gonna fasten off, so go ahead and give it a chain and, and a pull. And let's go ahead and cut a generous strand, so that will be easy to hide. And so now this is what your square should look like. Okay, this is, now we need to go around it with our white trim. This is the same yarn that we're going to be using to connect it together with the lace and do the final perimeter rounds. So we're gonna go around each square with this yarn and I'll show you how to do that. I also wanted to show you that I had approximately three yards left of that particular bonbon, um, which is which is a good thing. Um, so that leave, left me a little bit of wiggle room um, concerning my gauge. But I just wanted to let you know again that sometimes these bonbons will have a little bit extra than, than other bonbons. So they should have the minimum of 27 yards. I think this had a little bit more in it. But again, um, please be sure that you're checking your gauge and make sure that this is not, you know, bigger than it needs to be. Let me go ahead and I'm going to give you a measurement right here. This is without blocking or anything. So this is approximately, yeah, you can see that there. It's approximately four and a quarter inches wide. And I'm going to measure from, from the biggest section here. It's, 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 it's about, yeah, four and a quarter by four and a quarter or 4.25 inches by 4.25 inches. See, what would that be in centimeters? That would be ooh, uh, probably, probably about 10.5 centimeters or uh, 105 millimeters. Okay. Both directions for the size. Now this is before we add the the next round that I'm going to show you. Okay, before I show you this next round, let me just go ahead and I'll give you a little tutorial on how to hide these loose ends. Um, there are going to be plenty of others to hide, but you know, if we can minimize uh, the pain a little bit now, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I like to do. So I am taking this, I, I threaded the yarn into my yarn needle, obviously, and I'm going to bring this down into the work. There it goes. I'm having a hard time getting it in there for some reason. Okay, and I'm just gonna, you know, run it under some of these stitches just like this. And let's just let's just do this again. I'm gonna run these under several of these. And you can also try crocheting over them, but I think it might be more prudent to try to hide these within the work at the end of this particular perimeter round. All right, so it'll, it'll give you fewer strands to have to worry with. Okay, so that, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna get my sharp scissors. Go ahead and clip it close, but not so close. You wanna make sure you don't get your stitches. Okay, so this is a lot neater now. So now we're ready to begin our perimeter round using the solid color or, what, or whatever color that you decide to use for putting these together. And, you know, be creative. You don't have to use the vanilla um, like I did. You know, if you want to use a black and be really brave, <laughs> it's a little more challenging to use the darker colors. But if you wanted to use one of the other many of uh, 40 some odd other colors to choose from, please feel free to do that. Um, and another option, I know this is getting a little off course here, but if you even wanted to use, you know, all the colors um, or, or all of the squares, the same color, or just limit yourself to three or four different colors and, and make a, you know, a pattern with them, you know, that would be a, a lovely idea. And then that way you'd be working with a lot of the balls instead of the bonbons and you wouldn't have to worry as much concerning the gauge, as long as you are able to have, you know, a little bit of extra yarn of the colors that you're working with. Just another couple suggestions for this project. 
All right, so I've made my slip knot, and I'm going to go ahead and join. And I'm going to go ahead and make a corner here, which is going to be a chain one. Then I work the single crochet, chain two, and another single crochet right there in that corner. After working that corner, we're ready to start working across the top. We're going to work a single crochet, chain three, and then a double crochet in the same space where that single crochet was worked. Okay, now we're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and we're going to do that again. This is more of an eyelet than a waddle stitch. So single crochet, chain three, and a double crochet worked in that space. And just for the record, I am still using my size G or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. We're not going to change to the smaller hook until we actually start connecting these squares together, which I will show you how to do in video number two. Okay, now we're going to skip the next two stitches. One, two, and single crochet, chain three, and double crochet. I'm going to do this across one, two, skip two, single crochet, chain three, double crochet, skip two, single crochet, chain three, and double crochet, skip two, single crochet, chain three, and double crochet. Okay, now you should have six of these eyelets across. Now this again is the corner. This is the chain two corner. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, six of these eyelet stitches across. You get, you skip the last two, one, two, and then we're going to work a chain two corner, which is a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet worked all in that same chain two space and then start it again. And all four sides should be worked the same. Single crochet, chain three, and a double crochet worked in that same space. Skip the next two and do it again. Single crochet, chain three, and double crochet. So go ahead and work that all across this side. And since you have 18 stitches across every side, every side should look the same with these six eyelet stitches. And then when you get to the chain two corner, just like I did here, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. So go ahead and work this eyelet stitch across, skipping two stitches in between, and I'll show you the next corner. So after I've worked, all the way across and you can see after this corner I have one, two, three, four, five, six of these eyelet stitches. We skip the last two stitches, one, two, and then working in the chain two corner, we work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. And then we start it again. I'm going to start this first stitch again working in the very first stitch of that side, single crochet chain three, double crochet, skip the next two stitches, one, two, and then work another stitch, the eyelet. Okay, and go ahead and just continue working this all the way around your square, and I'll show you the final connection at the end. After working this all the way around the square, I'm actually going to join with a slip stitch in the very first place where the yarn was joined, just like this, a slip stitch, and then give it a chain and a tug. That way it minimizes the bulk. Make sure we give a nice generous strand here. This way it minimizes the bulk by, by not working in the top of that stitch, okay? And so now what you can do, and I would highly recommend you go ahead and use your yarn needle 
just like I showed you earlier, and go ahead and hide these loose threads now while you can. Okay, now after we finish 42 of these, okay, so go ahead and make 42. And then once you do that, what you need to do is lay them out on a bed or a flat surface somewhere. Um, and I, I lay them out one with the vertical, the, the cable going vertically, and then the next one going horizontally, the next one vertically, then horizontally. And then as you add additional ones to it, like so this one is going vertically, and then the next square would go up here horizontally, just like you would see uh, floor tiles. And once you do that, you need to lay them out on a bed or a flat surface, like I said, in the order that you would like for them to appear. Once you do that, I would stack them in stacks of seven going across. And then we will, you can go to video number two and where I will show you how to connect these. But go ahead and get the layout of how you would like them. I'll go ahead and put a couple of pictures of my finished Afghan um, in at the end here so that you can take a look at those and you don't have to make them exactly and let me say one other word about the variegated yarn that I used in this sample I actually didn't use this particular square in my finished afghan because I wanted to stick more with the solid colors now if you do order the bonbons you may have to if if you're looking for the variegated colors you're going to have to order that special um, this is not a part of the normal um, groupings of the bonbons. Um, it actually was a little bit extra, so that's actually why I used this for this particular demonstration. Um, so I hope that's not too confusing for you. I do think that the solid colors do tend to show the stitch a little bit better, actually, than this. But so this project is now going to be continued in video number two, when you're going to need your smaller crochet hook and the solid color that you chose to connect all of your squares together. I'll see you again in video number two. God bless. Bye-bye.